play here. Map number two, Astralis versus Ants. The first going in favor of Astralis, a long overtime affair, but we find ourselves here on Nuke, the map pick of Astralis, and they'll be looking to try and get off to a brilliant start here in the pistol. Flash buying up into the air is going to force Alu back in towards Heaven. He does spot just a couple. And all five players charging out. Device spots out of play. It's going to push in towards the fence. This is smart for him. He's going to cut off the rotation. He's going to instead go for the duel. Find Sunny. Picks up the USB. That's Decon in control with the T's. This is looking very good already for Astralis. It's looking brilliant. And well, now the rotation having to come through from Ents. But the man advantage available. They're going to go up the vent. And it's Dupree what? that's gone up here. Catching off Ariel. And now the rest of the team coming through as well. They have got Alu up in heaven still. And Sergei's going to come and back him up. But that's the headshot from a device that's coming through. Ringing in. And now it's only X7 and Alu. A 2v3 overall. Trying to hold on to the site as Glaive peeks in with a P250. Looking to do the damage. Alu has descended upon the A bomb site. And it's going to be an easy two pick up for Alu and X7. Now now only Glaive, the in-game leader for Astralis, trying to make it happen, but they know where he is. He's been spotted, he does the damage, but Alu holds the angle. Ents on the defuse, it's perfect here. Alu's just gonna hold on, and there's the headshot. Astralis will lose the pistol. That's a big round from Alu. That is a massive round, 3k, and it felt like, honestly, Astralis had that one in the bag. Yep. They have control of Vents, I love the play just to go up towards, uh, towards the upper bomb site, and of course, it took free with a crazy kill, just, just running up ladder and getting the frag, but somehow Alu, like you mentioned, from the heavens, just being an angel of death. What a round, and what a round to win indeed. Starting off on the right foot. They did pick to start a CD side, obviously, the map pick from Astralis means their opponent's ends will have the, the pick of the sides. And of course, you want to start a CD side here in Nuke. It's going to be uh, an interesting buy from Ents, though. A lot of investments in the rifles and uh, a distinct lack of utility. On the side of Astralis, they get the bomb down. So a little bit of extra money to work with. Glaive will drop an AK-47 over to Majisk. But Device will be found out. That's huge because when the trade does come in, Majisk has a lot to do. Should be finding this kill here. Two quick kills. Trade's being pretty equal, but Majisk just spinning around, taking heads. And now it's a 2v2 bomb picked up by Zipex. Well, X7 like catches off Magus, takes him down. Now it's only Zipex left into a 1v2. And the Deagle is going to spot the player crossing towards CT. Zipex starting to run in towards the lower bomb site. Sergei drops in. This is the perfect position for him, and he misses the timing. Zipex, does he spot? Does he know that Sergei's in there? He'll find a headshot, and now it's a 1v1. 7 HP is all Zipex has to work with, and he's running up towards A. This is perfect, but he's going to fake the A rotation. He's going to go back to the vent, but that's exactly where X7's going. He'll hear the footsteps. Zipex ready for it, and X7 does not want to go towards the top. Zipex aware, but he's 7 HP, so can't just take the straight on fight. Eventually, we'll tap, trying to pull X7 up towards the top of the vent, and there he goes, falling forward, but look at that. Zipex eventually going to go stick. X7 spots him, and look at this battle. It's just a <laughs> battle of the chickens, and well, there we oh. go. X7 will find it. Zipex will fall, and a game of chicken finally ends in X7's victory. Again, a massive round coming out from one of the players' events. X7 with a 3k. Zipex there. I mean, that round was pretty much done, and he played it so very smart. He waited and waited. But then, like you mentioned, a game of chicken, and X7 does come out on top. Unfortunate for Zipex, it was only 7 HP, so all X7 needed was a one bullet on any part of the body. I'm a little surprised that uh, Zipex didn't kind of go for the safe plan once he knew exactly where X7 was, but I guess he didn't want to be trapped behind the silos. Instead, it will be found out. Two rounds for Ents. Although, that was a very expensive round, and Astralis are aware of this. A fast play coming out. Sunny blinded, gets caught out. There's another CT nearby. It is Alu with AK-47 from above. He's got to find one. Looking for more in the smoke, but just the one. Dupree replies back. Wow. Glaive able to take down Ariel. Famas able to come in with a pick. And now Astralis have the advantage. Let's keep it their first round on the board. They've come close to so many of them, but... Glaive is going to peek in towards lower, catches X7 off towards the right side of the ramp. And while Sergei available up in the rafters, starting to get closer, Glaive ready for it, but Sergei, MP9, taking him down. Bomb in the possession of Dupree, but where does he go with this? 1v1 again, Dupree sprints towards the vent. Are we going to have a uh, deja vu here, but it's a different, <laughs> different two players. Sergei finally comes up on top this time. It'll be an easy kill. Sergei oh, okay. spamming into the corpse of Dupree. And again, another 1v1 going in favor of Ents. Sergey just having a great time. This is the most emotion I've ever seen out of a Finnish player. <laughs>
Uh, just uh, has a lot of time. He's trying to probably retrieve. He doesn't have that much time. He doesn't have a kit here. So <laughs> he has to be very careful yeah. there. He has plenty of time, obviously. But you know, imagine if it got a little bit scary. That would be that'd be an annoying way to lose. It is a little problematic for Ants, though. Despite being three zero up, you can clearly see the money is still not ideal. Now Sergey can drop an op onto Alu. Now that could happen. And Alu, in the meantime, can drop the uh, gun over towards Sunny, who just has thirty-six hundred dollars. And there we have it, Alu with a big green zoom banger for Mass in the hands of Sergey. The rest of them gonna have the M Force, another for Mass in the mix. And for Astralis, of course, they're gonna go for the buy. They got the bomb down two rounds in a row. So they have the AK forty sevens, but they're looking to. They're basically showing the fact, showing the uh, the utility, just the very very limited utility. AKs all around, just a one smoke and one flash remaining for the T side. They're looking to go for these duels, but towards outer yard, especially with Al with the AWP, it could be quite problematic indeed. Sunny's playing pretty aggressively towards secret, and they're actually walking towards. Oh, they're walking in. They're gonna line up. Alu, look at the damage, Dinko. Look at the damage inflicted. He just finds one. But Device on 37, Majisk on 16. Sunny should have no trouble picking up both the players, and Majisk decides to slowly fade away. And man advantage established for Ents. And now ramp control. Given up. Sergey from behind finds Majisk. Zipex strikes. But now it's a 2v3. 2v3 indeed. As Astralis look to try and run over the top, it's gonna be an easy kill for Dupree. Sunny. Buying the dust and now Dupree on his own again. How many times have you got to see that? He just gets the bomb planted and then dies immediately after. Sergey continuing his uh, his BM a little bit here. And uh, really, really just rubbing it in. Wasting flash buyings. Having a great time. And this is what you love to see. A good bit of BM coming in from Sergey. Fours hero up and having a great time on nuke so far. And this is exactly the start we wanted to see them have. You know, you want to see them come into this. Getting the runs under their belt. They've just lost Train in, in a fashion that is quite heartbreaking. Because you have to remember, they could have realistically won Train. They were in the driver's seat for so long. There was rounds that they should have won that went in favor of Astralis. But now these close rounds are going in favor of Ents. The crazy thing for Astralis, they haven't had to go for a full eco yet so far. They're going to keep buying up. Of course, fourth round loss bonus. It's max loss bonus. New system have the AKs, and this time they have a little bit of extra utility as well to work with. For Ents, these rounds have been narrow, Jinko. They, they have won it, they've won four in a row, but you can take a look. The, the, the coffers are pretty much empty. X7 timing could be disastrous. He's got to peek up, spots a player, spots multiple players, in fact, does a bit of damage, and it's going to do, do the smart thing and fall on back, just relinquishing ramp control in Astralis. Haven't got ramp control now, we'll be falling back towards lobby. They're going to keep one player there, it's going to be Device. This upper hit might be coming in. They don't have any Molotovs. So one smoke, a few flashbangs, and a nade in the hand of Zipex. The problem is for Ents, they haven't lost a single member. So they have this set up. Three players towards upper. Well, making their way out of the door. It's going to be Glaive, the front man. On towards the A-bomb site here, but Sergey is inside of the hut. He's also got his teammate at the back of the site itself, but they aren't aware that they're so close. Astralis are already on the site, and well, they're just not ready for that. Sergey and Ariel both fall. They had no information that Astralis were already right in front of them. Well, this should be around in the bag for Astralis. Save call coming in already from Ents. Howley going back towards CT spawn, but he misses the shot, and Device will take him down. Now he sees an AWP available to him. X7 is aware that Device will be sprinting for that gun, and well, he'll have a chance to stop it from getting into the next round. He'll do a good job shutting him down with a FAMAS, and now his task is to carry that AWP over for Alu. Gonna be around finally being posted from Astralis. It feels like it's been a long time coming. They've been in so many 1v1s, they've brought it down to the close round so many times here, and finally they'll get one on the board. Yeah, it has been very close, hasn't it? If you look at the, if you look at the way the rounds have played out, the second round, which uh, ends one, came to a 1v1. The third round, a 1v1. The fourth round, a 2v1. Which means the money is not good at all for Ents, despite having this 4-1 lead. The saved AWP is going to come in real handy alongside the AK-47 in the hands of Sunny. But if you look at the cash of the rest of the players, this is mm, looking mighty rough indeed. The force, of course, coming in. They're going to try and work around the AWP and the AK-47. Double UMPs. You might see a Desert Eagle in the hands of X7. Stralis can somehow win this one. They're gonna break the economy for offense. They can start trying to claw back into this game into this particular map.
Sunny is going to toss that Molotov and try and prevent Astralis from safely crossing towards Secret, but it's not going to be working. Astralis do get down already. Multiple players in towards the lower side of the map. Now Ed's struggling to patch up these holes. Astralis already down towards the double door. It's X7 who has been spotted by Magis. He'll do a little bit of damage. And there through the smoke, the headshot will come through. Ariel luckily shutting down Zipex in reply. So we're still 4v4. Still even odds here. And with Astralis still having plenty of time and the bomb in their control, the better weapons across the board. This is starting to look pretty scary for the Finns. Bomb planted. We've got good post plant positions here on the B bomb site as well. It's going to be very difficult for Ents to work their way back in. So probably just the save call coming in from the finish side again. And Astralis, two, two in a row, and put them together now. If Alan finds another one, oh, this yeah. could happen. Yeah, really walking up, picks up an AK. Are they, are they really going to go for this? It looks like they are. Flashbang from Glaive, that's going to be great. It's going to allow the player on the bomb oh, side to device. peek on out. And it's going to be Magist who finds the kill. Device from behind. And that's Sergei left alone. And it should be the call for him to just try and hold on to his AK-47, and that's going to be the round. He's still looking for it towards Decon. He's been spotted out by Magisk, who wants the hunt here, but Sergei will survive. On 22 HP, but the money has been completely crushed for ends, Dinko. At that point, I w I'm really looking at the save call there from Ents, and I I'm, I'm wondering why, you know, you can obviously understand the attempt, you know, Alu gets that one kill, if he gets another one, there's certainly a chance there in a 3v3. That flank from Device came in, it was pretty much the insurance policy for Astralis anyway, but uh, and Ents probably would have been better just carrying those weapons into the next round, but at least you have the AK in the hands of Sergei, at least it's something to play with, but the rest on default pistols, should be Astralis finding three in a row. Yeah, considering it's a full eco, the USPs going to be quite hard indeed. Sergei trying to be aggressive, but Zepex is ready. Oh. AK-47, just able to find one. Now they've retrieved two. The problem is they have no Kevlar, nothing. Just a one flashbang and the two AKs on the remaining four members. So as long oh. as they play this one right, it should work out. Silo, Magisk finds him. And one by one they fall. This should be a pretty comfortable run for, for Astralis as Sunny comes running out, but uh, Device is going to have none of it. So just one player lost for Astralis to retain the four rifles, and we should be seeing another buy coming out now from Ents. It's not going to be a great buy, though. They're definitely going to be missing a lot of utility. They're not going to have that ult for Alu that's been such a pivotal factor for them. So 4-3. Astralis. Open the hands of Device. Everything they could possibly want, and money now building on this T side, along with rounds and momentum. So Ents, they've got to put a stop to it. The M4 is in play. There are no kits across any of the players here on the CT side. So keep an eye on that. Hopefully that won't come back to, to cause issues for Ents here. They don't have a plethora of utility either, so things are not looking great, but still the weapons. All the weapons. For Astralis, it's about trying to keep the money on us, trying to just win this battle of attrition early in the uh, in the first half. See Astralis setting up the smokes to its outer. All the smokes. They're expending quite a lot of the utility early. Oh, device. Oh, device. Oh, get out of there. Okay. One HP. One HP. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I I mean, I like the 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 cojones to go for the peak over the top, right? But. Yeah, not really working out there. At least he gets away with his life. He's kind of lucky to do so there. He should have been dead to rights. 55 seconds in play. Astralis now working the ramp area. Glaive is going to throw the flash on in. Gets him for the X7 is back here. He's going to be playing a crossfire with Alu in the corner. But Astralis are not committing. They're just throwing a little bit of utility. Testing the water. Trying to pull the rotation off towards that position. Oh, no. And now they immediately go back and strike in towards the A site. It's Sergei who falls first. Zipex catches Ariel. Trying to get up towards the top of the vent. Alu manages one. But Glaive was in the perfect position to refrag. And now the bomb planted. X7 trying to do some work. It's only Sunny. Left alone in a 1v3. And again, this has to be surely the save call from Sunny. They're low here, though, on Astralis. He could find these two kills, but with no kit available, it's not going to be easy at all. He'll run over the top, and one, two, three is ready for him. It's a fourth run now for Astralis, and they put them all together. Money is not looking good here for Ents whatsoever. It's going to be a couple of P250s, a little bit of action now in the pistols, but it should be Astralis taking the lead. Yeah, one thing about Astralis, I mean, their anti-Ecos have been definitely stellar. A team legendary for the style of Counter-Strike they do play. 
and uh, they're not going to be giving too many uh, too many avenues for pistols to kind of like uh, take them down. Unlike some of the games we've been catching these guys region. <laughs> device oh opening it God. up, but the barrage of nades just finds device and it's going to be an absolute slaughter towards the outer yard. Sergey left alone here. It's got to be an easy cleanup for Astralis. Uh, the op should be retrieved as well for device, but look at the money right now for Astralis, Dinko. This is looking quite rough indeed for the finish side. Yeah, it's just building and building for Astralis. I, I like that little artillery fire from Eds, though. At least they brought something to the table. A nice uh, falls victim to it. But again, no real money problems over here on Astralis. Could be a buy from Eds. Finally, they got that cash injection. Good chance for them. But like you said, money's so well built up on Astralis that they're going to have to do a lot of work. It's not They have to win this one, and they also have to win it with as many players as possible staying alive. Because if they lose too many, they will be on that low buy, and Astralis can just come back into things with a full solar buy. Again, I love the pace from Astralis. Look at the pace they're setting straight in towards the lower bomb site. Already through with Dupree and Zipex, and they can just get this bomb planted. And it's not just about the bomb getting down. If you look at Zipex's position, he's pushed in so very deep. Device, tested. Zipex pushed up. It's X7. There's no need to face here. This run's pretty much almost over, if you ask me. And he's going to get plucked up. That should be the call for the save. Your money is nowhere close to being good enough. And even though to get the one kill, Device with the AWP finds one more. They're just hemorrhaging, just bleeding players. A call for the save has rung out on the, the finish side. Ariel Surginalu will hold on to their guns. And at this point, this is where Estrella start going for the hunt. This is where they start making life even more miserable for Ents. Well, the uh, unfortunate scenario here for Ents is the, the, the start they had. Yeah, okay, they went four in a row, but even in those rounds, it wasn't that convincing. It was brought down to the 1v1 fights a lot of the time. Um, I, I liked the uh, BM coming out of Sergei. I, I thought that was going to be the energy Ents needed. Still can make it happen here. We've got a buy again, but uh, it's all about the round wins at this point. And Astralis are winning most of them. Six on the T side already. Nuke, obviously, uh, you would see a lot more rounds being picked up on the T side with the Krieg meta. Still waiting to see whether or not that is the, the case overall statistically. We haven't really got a huge sample pool just yet in terms of seeing whether or not the, the nerf of the Krieg has really affected the T-side round wins, but that my hypothesis is that it will, to, sm to a small extent. Yeah, as much as smaller extent compared to Train, right? I mean, this is a map where it's been around for quite a while now, okay, this situation. Okay, Did he just disconnect? I think he's timed out, yeah. <laughs> I thought he might have killed himself, but it seems like he's disconnected, which is why we have two devices on the server, so it is just a little bit confused uh, right now on the HUD. Yeah, but uh, considering that damage has been dealt already, and uh, the game is going to continue. Yep. But uh, and he has joined back, luckily. But they do get the one kill onto uh, onto Alu. The device finds Sunny. So we're getting immediately replying back. It's still a three v three, even Steven so far. X seven going for the fight. They spots a two player towards radio, and now you can see the rotation taking place. Sergey climbing up the vents. They're aware at least two players are towards the lobby area. But Stralis now, they're going to be pushing back towards ramp. Oh, well, X7 catching out Zipex. It's going to be Magis moving forward, catching X7 off. And now we're into a 2v2. 25 seconds left. Ariel's position is solid, but the longer he takes, the less impactful it will be. And that's Sergei Molotov back up towards the top of the stairs. This is well played from Astralis. All the protocols are there. They're making sure that they just get themselves the site safely. They get the bomb planted. Now Ariel trying to come back in from the ramp. He's going to catch Magis. He knows that Glaive was in there, but Glaive finds the important fight. Sergei falls, and now it's all on Ariel. He's going to go immediately for the defuse. He's just sticking it. A little offset as well, so Glaive can't find the angle. He can't get the spam through, and there it is. Oh. Ariel pulls it off. The smoke in the... Uh, the defuse in the smoke, should I say, but I almost forgot the English. <laughs> and well, there we go. Just chaos inside the smoke. Glaive couldn't quite find the angle. And with the way Ariel actually approached that, he goes to the, the left side. So even if Glaive tries to get the angle, he has to pivot so much that to, to really get a comfortable spray on there, the door might have actually had to be open. So really good stuff there. That is just so unfortunate for Astralis as well. They lost Dupree the beginning of the round. It came down to a 1v1 and oh, they're going to be so frustrated with that. But still, 6-5 for the Danes. Still going to be feeling pretty comfortable. 
Valkyrie is definitely back in the silver. Money is just completely out of control for Astralis. 12k for Glaive. The rest of them, 8,000, 7,000, 5,000 Majesk. It's just looking very, very good indeed. And for Ents, once more, Dinko. They win one, but now they're again in danger of getting reset if they lose this round. Astralis, once more, deploying a bit of utility towards Outer. And three players slowly inching ahead. In fact, might be all four of them. Device with the bomb on his back, and now Ali with the AWP with a lot to do. Well, Glaive cashing Ariel. Yeah, we falling. And now Astralis. With the man advantage, he's going to be charging in towards the lower bomb site. It's going to be Sunny looking to try and hold on here. Going to be a chance for him. Glaive is going to fall. And now Sergei looks to the right. It's going to be Device being picked off. Sergei. Coming around the backside of the vent. It's mad just quitting that. Sergei with an easy kill. Dropping him. And now what was looking good for Astralis at the start of this round has certainly crumbled. It's looking almost unrecoverable. Pretty just clearing the top of the vent. But again, any round we say that looks unrecoverable for Astralis, it looks certainly un uh, difficult. They seem to always find a way to nearly make it happen or make it happen. We've seen it on train quite a few times. 2v4 is being made to work. And while Dupree and Zipex have got themselves in towards this A-bomb site. Bomb planted. Sergey is going to take a fight in the open against Dupree, taking him down by Zipex. Just too many players. And well, eventually he is overrun. Alu shuts him down, and it's the sixth round now for Ets. I love what uh, Ents did there. 4v2, they don't waste any time just peeking one by one. Just all four together pushing in. And especially the moment they got Dupree, it was just all alone, the one final player. And that uh, 1v4 was never going to happen. And they, they, they kind of tied things up here. Keeping three alive as well. Definitely going to help their economy as we go into the, uh, the final rounds here of the first half. Three rounds remaining, scores tied. And Astralis, again, I could just have to point out, they can keep buying till the end of this half. The money has been built up such a... Great streak of rounds they had. 4-0 for Ents initially, Dinko. And then Astralis back-to-back -back six rounds in a row. But now Ents have managed to get a couple back together to tie things up. And who's going to come out on top is a question here. It's Ents. Three players towards up early on. There's just a one player towards uh, ramp. That is uh, Mr. Ariel. And Al with the op playing towards outer. Well, crunch time now in the first half. Really getting into the important rounds that define what the start of the second is going to be looking like. Maz is taking the early damage. He's dropped 33 HP. Estrella is still with plenty of utility. Are going to be setting up for what looks to be an outside execute. We'll see if that is the case. Can't quite see from this uh, perspective, unfortunately. But we'll uh, we'll see what goes down. It's going to be the smokes tossed in towards outside. Multiple players heading their way in behind them. So, glaive at the front. Maz just second in behind. He's low HP, so it doesn't really want to be caught through this smoke from the spam that is coming in. And now Astralis just walking their way down secret stairs. I do believe it's one of the first times that Astralis have gone for such a late take towards secret. Which could potentially catch Ents off guard. They have no information, no inkling as to where the players of Astralis are. They have left Zapex towards the lobby area, just... Uh, the Lurk, just holding the line, looking for any aggression from the CDs towards the lobby. In the meantime, look at the way Astralis is spreading out towards lower, Dinko. There's no one there. The Flashman's going to be the tell, though. And now the rotation should be coming in from the CDs. But then Molotov okay. from Device. Oh, the timing on that. Molotov. Except spots him out. And he's going to push on out. He goes for the spray. One, looking for more. Two kills. That is massive from X7. That's and huge. with that, Sergei finding Zipix. It's huge. This is very winnable now for Ents. With eight seconds on the clock, bomb is going to be planted. Oh. It's all in device. He finds one, but not the second. Well, it's all Magis now trying to make it happen. The 1v2 up on top of the ramp in the open. And well, that play from X7 is absolutely huge. They think the Molotov is going to keep them at bay, right? Glaive has no idea about that ramp progression. X7, he gets the timing on the edge of the Molotov. He walks in, he finds two. And well, Astralis just lose too many players there. And Ents come in. The retake is completely doable. And they make it happen for a seventh round. At this moment, I don't think Ents care how they win the rounds as long as they win it. Yeah. And that was uh, Astralis had every one of the lower bomb side, and Device even spotted out X7. The Molotov was tossing perfectly, but it was half a second too late, and he just went on in. At that point, you just go for the full commit. No one is expecting him to be there, and the fact that he got a second kill was just miraculous for X7. As Ents now, think of, they're finally back okay. in the lead. It's been a while, but look at the pace being set by Astralis. Glaive finds one. Aerial replies back, but the trades are real good so far. Sergey on the site. He finds device. 
Well, the pressure is on, but Enter handling it well. So Pex finally gets one kill back on towards X7, but it's a 1v3 in total. Throw some ult off to allow him to get onto towards the B-bomb site safely. No one going to be chasing after him. A 2v1 retake of the B-bomb site, and if you want a man in a clutch, it's certainly Zipex. He's going to be trying to hold off this vent attack. There's one. Falls back inside of the site, trying to be aware of all the different possibilities, and while Alu is just in behind Decon. Smart decision for Zipex to close the door. That gives away Alu's position once he reopens it, and now just one bullet needed. Zipex is going to fall. It's a headshot right through the box. Doesn't matter that he was 5 HP, and Ents will get an 8th round. Valid up from Zipex for a moment there, I believed. But it was so very low when he took that deal. And Alu, even if he didn't spot him out early on, he had the Molotov in hand. He could have easily flushed him out. 8-6 to six now. Ents ensuring that you do have the lead going into the second half. And 9 rounds would be the cherry on top. And just look at how much... If you just look at the rounds, Ents have won. Out of the 8 rounds have won, 7 of them have been with a Diffuse. They, Estrals have got the bomb down time and time and time again. This goes to show how... So potent, how menacing the T-side from, from Astralis can be on you. Final round though, and they of course still have the buy. Device is running out dry, Alice gonna find himself a free kill. That is uncharacteristic from Device. Well, it doesn't work for him, and Astralis lose the early pick. Magic still has got himself in towards Secret. He's down in towards the lower bomb side already. Astralis desperately need a kill back in here. Trying to work it through the lower bomb site as Magisk, just going very slowly. Astralis are playing the default everywhere else, just holding the lines, making sure if any aggression comes in from Ents that they're ready for it. Sergey has got himself in towards Hut, so there's actually a lot of control established here by Ents. It's going to be difficult for Astralis to not lose a couple of players when this eventual attack comes in. Zipex might just lose this duel against Sergey. There it is. That's the pick you're looking for of your Ents. If you find that, now you're in... What is looking like a brilliant position, especially with Magis just coming back up, X7, so passively waiting. Does get the refrag, Alu unfortunately has to fall first, but look at this. Oh no, the flank from Sergei is absolutely perfect. Glyph gets caught, and that's the bomb dropped. It's all on Dupree, 15 HP to make this half happen, to try and get a 7th on the board for Astralis, and I just don't think it will. It's looking like Ents are going to grab 9, and this is a great half from them. All things considered, you know, Astralis won a little bit of a tear, but Ents fight back. Oh, absolutely. This has been a very, well, not exactly super convincing because some of these rounds are very, very close indeed, but... The Second half live with Ents versus Astralis. It's 9-6, Ents leading the way. They're currently a map down in the series, so they desperately need Nuke. And while well, they lead the way by three, and Sunny's got a good start into the pistol, Alu oh. as well following up. This is not good for Astralis. They're losing way too many players early on. And while well, Ents look to try and fill in the hole through the door, it's Alu flanking for the backside, doing damage on towards Magisk, but he runs out of ammo. But he's done his, he's done, he's done the work though. Keeping Mag Magisk occupied means the rest of his players can make their way towards the lower bomb side. But Zepex is ready and waiting, but he's alone. He's isolated. He just finds one. Sunny in the smoke. He's going for the shank and Zepex, but he's got to get taken down. Sunny having none of it, leaving it all in Dupree in a 1v3. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sunny with a clean tap. That's the way you want to get a pistol win. P250 to the Dome of Dupree, and while well, Ents hit double figures, this is exactly the beginning they'd be looking for coming into the second half. You can't really afford to, to get those nine rounds on the board, a lot of which we discussed previous could have went in the way of Astralis. You know, you have to remember all of those 1v1s at the start of this game. They did go in favor of Ents, so they have taken that opportunity, they've ran with it, and they get the start into the second half, and now Astralis is forced by, well, that this is what they're relying on to get them back into the start of this second. It, it, it does feel strange, doesn't it? It's always felt like Stralis have been on the back foot so far, apart from that little streak they had earlier on the T side. And now, Sunny and Ariel against a Deagle in the hands of Device. Rounds of a couple of bullets, doesn't quite find the kill, doesn't even do much of damage. But now they spot two players heading towards Secret. Bomb not spotted out yet. Sunny waiting patiently for Dupree to go for that peak, and Dupree gets tagged on a 19 HP. He's gonna run for the hills, heading towards Decon. Now, light is immense. They're being very measured right now. They have four-star rotation with Astralis. And there's an upper bomb site, Dinko. Just one player lying in wait. That is very scary if you're Astralis. Well, one minute left on the clock. Sergei being tasked with holding uh, holding in towards Tcon or Lobby, should I say. And, well, Dupree down towards the lower bomb site already. 5-7 in his hands. Looking to try and pick off the two remaining players coming his way, but... 
Shoot dead to right. There it is. Sunny with a headshot. Good opening. Good chance now to move in towards the B bomb site for him. But the rest of the push coming through towards A. It's 6 7. Takes the head off Magisk. Another dive in towards the vent. He comes through. Alu gets domed by the nade. Sergei picks up Glaive. And that is just a little bit of an awkward affair inside of those vents. But luckily, Ents not really getting caught off by too much of these rounds for Astralis. Another bomb can get planted. Sergei should confirm the round now for Ents. 11 6. Stralis saving the scout and the deagle into the next. But that is uh, now it's starting to look pretty one sided. Ents are really getting into this. Oh, yeah, they are. And, and the thing is, they won the pistol round on the CD side. They won the following anti ecos as well. And again, they've managed to replicate it. Win the pistol, win the, against the force buy. Although we still have another eco going to be coming out for Astralis here, which Ents should have in the back. And that's going to make it 12 to 6, Tinko. And a map where. Like you did mention to me uh, during the uh, during the half that uh, Ents are a team who did break that streak, end the streak by off Astralis on Nuke. Oh, <laughs> as device as dunk Sergey down. Unfortunately, he loses the gun. But honestly, if I'm Ents, I'm still feeling happy. They retain the two AK-47s and more importantly, they get to round number eleven. I love how device is actually the one that they choose as the impact player in that round. It's crazy. It gets two exit kills. But yeah, two big exit kills as well. Deagle headshot, then the nade finishing it off. But yeah, Ents will win the round. Could have got a little bit scary inside that vent. You know, Glaive drops down in behind them. Maybe thought that was his teammate, but they turn around. Clear communication there for Ents. And now Astralis, just the default USPs in play. The scout for Zipex. Dupree doesn't have a gun. He has a Zeus. That's it. Okay, Glaive, USP. How is he alive? That a beautiful little Oh my tackle. god, Get nearly gets again. second. That is another real scary chance there that Glaive nearly pulled that off, but Alu does drop to Vice. Still really questioning why Dupree just has a Zeus. Uh, mind games? <laughs> uh, Doesn't even have the pistol. Sure. I mean, you won the USP at least. I mean, you get it for free. Yeah. I mean, we just see what Glaive can do with it. Well, let's see if we can make the Zeus work. Oh, really uh, unlikely, yeah. Zipex so just floating around, looking to just pick up a couple of kills, but Ents is a much more convincing round here against this uh, Eco and Dupree. <laughs> yeah, like I said, roaming around with the Zeus, and no one will show themselves for him. Lovely, lovely life as well. And Zipex gets caught out. They have taken a bit of damage, but due to the bomb radius on Nuke, all four will survive. Ariel, Zerg, and Sunny were so very low, mind you. 12 to 6 now. Hence, they have managed to get themselves a very good lead. It's been a pretty impressive, uh, well, you can even say comeback, because at one point, Astralis was 6 4 up on the T side here. And now Ents are strung together eight rounds in a row across uh, both the halves. And now the buy is going to be coming in for Astralis. Device for the AWP. M4s all, all around for every one of the players. The one problem here is I don't see a singular kit. Glaive could have purchased a kit for himself. He has $400, but uh, that's a little that's a little dicey. Okay. Dupree spamming through catches Sergei. And that's a good opening in for Astralis. The Pex moving forward. It's going to catch Aerial off. It's a man advantage double here on the Astralis side. But Ents do get the ball plan. X7 manages that in towards the lower side. Molotov goes in and forces Dupree into the one eye, uh, Zipex into the one angle. He's going to peek forward and catch out X7. Dupree taking down Sunny. And it's an easy cleanup in the end for Astralis. They don't lose a single player. In fact, they don't even take a single point of damage. That's insane. How have they not taken a single point of damage? Great round from Dupree and Zipex, of course. And Device picking up, chiming in with one of his own as well. I love what Enz did there. A fast play, a fast dive into the defense, but unfortunately, doesn't quite pan out. Astralis, they need to just not just win this round, Tinko. They need to win a couple more just to ensure that the money remains stable. I mean, you're happy enough with that kind of round if it's like an eco or something, or like a force buy, half buy kind of scenario, but that was a full gun round and just nothing happened in it, unfortunately. So that's Astralis feeling pretty happy about that first gun round that they've been able to pick up in the second half. Now, Ant's coming into this. It's going to be the alt for Alu. The AK's back in play. Like you said, their, their economy's on its last legs already, so. This is exactly the kind of round Astralis want to win. And while Device getting aggressive, we see him do this all the time. And it works for him well. Dropping Sunny towards outside, giving the advantage on over towards Astralis. And there's no trade potential. Zero trade potential. Dupree trying to go for the wall bank through the top of Hut. So we'll get tagged down to 50 points of health. He's going to be falling on back. Ooh. Alu 
Mm. Biff spots him. And instead of just, you know, carried away, he wants to just destroy <laughs> the fight. Takes the fight against the orb, and oh my god, device. He's having a great that's time. That's a scary device. Yeah, that's a scary device. When he starts getting going like this, he's the sort of opera you expect to play the role right, right? He's going to be playing it safe. He's going to be playing the percentage game. It's an expensive gun. It's a big investment for his team. But when he starts playing like that, just going for these uh, aggro picks and whatnot, that's when you start to feel a little afraid of your ends. All three players for ends now gathered together towards the ramp area. 50 seconds on the clock. Oh, They're going to be heading position. in. And guess who's waiting? It's Zephex. He's ready for it. They're coming around the corner. 45 seconds in play. Tapping out to the left side. It's going to be an easy kill for them. Zipex. Magic's actually helping him as well. And Dupree is rooted in towards the lower side. So, Alu, last remaining player, stuck inside of ramp. Life expectancy, probably a few seconds now. There we go. Zipex shuts him down. It rounds to the board for Astralis. Another clean round win. They only lose Magisk. And like you said, Device getting aggressive, being very proactive, starting to feel it. He was trying that on the T side. He was trying to go for these crazy plays, like jumping up on top of red, taking his fights, going for these questionable <laughs> plays. Didn't really work for him. He got slapped on the wrist a few times, but he, I, I love that he's just going for it consistently, and he's made it work here on the CT side this time. And more importantly, Dinko, they keep a majority of the players alive. Play the only casualty, money looking good, and finally it is... Uh... An eco four ends, uh, a full eco in fact, just a couple of pistols being upgraded. Okay. I feel they're running through the flames and Magist, thank you very much. She's gonna pad his stats and uh, 12 to 9. Astralis start to claw back, but the buy is gonna be coming in again for ends. Yeah, that's beautiful for Magisk. Four kills picked up easily enough. And yeah, this this is a really important buy coming up for Ents. So if they lose this one, that's when the, that big lead that they got for themselves is gone, right? Astralis are right back into things completely. It'll be uh, very scary times ahead. Stralis 9 on the board. They're getting that momentum going, and we've seen what happens when they get it going on uh, on trim. We've seen that in the previous. They definitely got back into these very, very quickly. And just dropping X7. And it almost feels like it's a blink of the eye. You know, you blink your eyes, you open it again, and Stralis are right back into the game. So it, it, it's a very scary prospect for Ents, and the Stralis are a very scary team to play against in that respect. You're never safe. You're never in a comfortable position. Yeah, I think every team uh, who's ever played against Astralis can attest to that fact. And now, after losing X7 early on, you see the wall of smokes. The default is a little bit of a gap though, and the nade sails it. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Flash is gonna be tossed up with him across and over, but Glade somehow with the smoke, he lines them up, goes for the full spray, and does a little bit extra damage on the aerial. 3v5, and again, Astralis haven't taken a single point of damage. Well, there we go. Throw that one left. Well, Ariel finally dropping <laughs> Dupree, and now a 4v3. The one swings wide open. Ariel just kind of making sure he's not being flanked upon. You never really know where these players are at this point. Sergey up towards outside, catches Glaive. It's going to be an easy headshot. A double kill from Sergey. Okay. Suddenly flipped around on its head. Good kill from Device, but the bomb has been planted. Now Device is the only player left. In the meantime, while Sergey was getting those kills towards upper, Zipex fall into the hands of Alu. Now we've got Device trying to come back in. He switched to the AK for this clutch. Definitely a better weapon for the scenario, but look at the hold. This is going to be impossible. There we go. Ariel, perfect position to deal with that. 13 to 9. Ents win that, and I, I really do feel Sergey ruins any chances for Astralis winning that round there. Oh yeah, that was something, something else from Sergey. Just all alone, just goes for the duels, kills both players. Just, just by his lonesome. And it, a round which definitely should have gone the way of Astralis. It was a 5v3, mind you. And it just gets plucked back. And then another round on board, 13 to 9. Now, Astralis, though, considering they won the couple of rounds uh, quite comfortably, they have the money. So they're going to be going for yet another very convincing buy. Okay. And, okay, that, that, that works, Clay. That works. Yeah, that's a great opening. And uh, Sergey, the player that had so much impact for them in the last round, is out of it early on. And while Device, oh, an uncharacteristic miss shot there from Device. He stays alive. That's the most important part. That advantage maintained here for Astralis. And there's not too many rounds where they can make mistakes anymore here that, uh, over on Astralis. You take a look. You know, only three away from victory for Ents. Three away from map number three. That's Inferno. If Ents do pick up, uh, pick up Nuke here, I, I think they're going to be kicking themselves quite a bit about that train performance because they certainly could have taken it over the line and even potentially have won the series 2-0, which is 
kind of crazy, but that's all what ifs, and unfortunately you gotta live in the now. Yeah, Counter Strike is all about the what ifs, right? What if you had hadn't lost an anti eco? What if you hadn't lost a two v three on train? But uh, Counter Strike is kind of like life that way. You know? A lot of what ifs, uh, could ifs, and uh, what could have been. Sometimes, just, really. Yeah, some, sometimes you have to live uh, with the regrets and just make do, like you said. You got to live in the now and make do with what you have. Right now, what they have are four players, and they are spending quite a bit of utility trying to make their hit, this hit towards upper. The device, Ooh. he smells it towards the ramp, and the perfect read as device plucks one. His teammate drops down towards ramp, and device is holding the line. X7 is going to get the drop onto him, though. Drops on down, but X6 with the off angle finds one, finds two, bomb dropped, and it's all in Sunny in a 1v4. He finds one, but it's still looking almost unwinnable with eight seconds left on the clock. Yeah, this round is, is done. It's going to be an easy round there in the end from uh, from Astralis. You know, it was looking hairy uh, with uh, with X7 catching device there. There's a real opportunity that opens up the B-bomb site. But Zipex, the, the gatekeeper, stopping any action unfolding below the bottom of the ramp. And that is perfect. Astralis now 10 on the board. First tactical pause coming in, I think, of the entire game. So yeah, this is if their first tactical pause of, uh, of Nuke. It is indeed. And, uh, well, I mean, we have seen less attack timeouts getting called unless, you know, the game is extremely, extremely intense, mainly because, you know, the coaches are sitting in their respective team speak servers. You have Twister coaching for Ents and, of course, Zonic uh, on the side of Astralis. And when you have, well, the rule sets are such that the coaches can talk throughout the game. They can sometimes even take the reins of calling for the, yes. for the respective teams. Uh, so when a tactical timeout does come in, it's when they want to slow things down a little bit. They want to take a breather. They want to talk about what they want to do the next round instead of just, uh, like, rushing through it. And that's something Ents are going to be very wary of. Like you said, you give an inch, Astralis is going to take a mile. And even though Ents have a three-round lead, it could easily dissipate into the ether. So, full eco. This is a P250 for X7, and the AK-47 in the hands of uh, Sunny. Touching back on the coaching point, right, of him being able to in-game lead. Obviously, that was the way CS was a while ago. Sunny catching device. So, one of these, uh, the AK here on the T side actually making it work a little bit. Now, Glyph, oh god, oh, this is not the start you would be hoping for. Sunny is just popping off. Good chance there, Zipex shutting down X7. That should have been a kill for X7, but Zipex taking him away. And well, now we're into a 3v4. Man advantage still available to Ents, thanks for Sunny. Now, the three Glocks. Around the one AK. It's still looking good for Astralis in terms of the weapons that they've got. He's still got to favor them. When it comes to these nice little touch blocks. there. Nice little touch from Dupree, just uh, smoking off towards ramp, pretending that uh, he hasn't pushed in as he does walk up towards the lobby. Hasn't found anyone though. And he realizes that uh, this aggression may not be worth it. Bear in mind, Ents do only have three players without Kelpar because it's going to be a slaughter. Majisk finds two. Ariel does reply back, but the last two players, Binko, they have no Kelpar. Well, bomb planted. Yeah, no Kevlar, but <laughs> got an AWP and relatively high HP. Now, this is a bit of an issue. Post plant positions is all down to positioning. If they can position themselves well enough, and this is a perfect crossfire being established now for this post plant. Dupree and Sipex trying to get back in, but this is looking like an ends round all day long. This has to be huge. It has to be so quick, and the timing has to fail Ariel, but it's not going to. He's going to find one. Finally shut down by Dupree. And now it's on to Alu, trying to make it happen. He's 23 HP, moves forward, and Dupree will force him out of heaven for the kill. And around for Astralis. Oh, that is just so heartbreaking, friends. They pull it so, so close, but Astralis will walk away with it. It's such a very fast decision being made by Dupree. He knew he had like a couple of seconds to make the calls to where Alu was. He saw the bomb plan, he knew exactly where Alu was. Tossing the nade and the Molotov, and of course, when you don't have the Kevlar, the nade is gonna hurt indeed. 13 to 11. A very close round. Sunny with the firepower, almost making that one happen. But Astralis, they do manage to clutch it out. Expensive round, but they still are going to be happy that they did not go the way of Ents now. Full buy this full buy. Ents. Want to somehow close this one out. Barrage of nades being tossed into its mini. Not going to find anyone, though. On surrogate, catching Dupree. Opening four ends. They're coming through. It's Magis trying to push forward. He's got himself into the corner. He's going to wrap around the corner, but it's Ariel waiting for him, stopping the aggression, stopping the chance for Astralis to pull that kill back. 
uh, well, device finally shuts down Sunny. It's going to be... Oh, no. Ariel stopping Glaive. And now a 2v4. Astralis sitting in a situation that's just not looking great for them right now. It's going to be Ants charging their way through in towards the ramp room. An easy round looking to be on the cards here for Ants. They can just limit the mistakes. Alu's throwing the Molotov to clear the corners. They don't want to be caught off by any of these loops and crannies, you know. You don't know if anybody's somehow got themselves in towards that lower bomb site. He's just hiding around, hoping to deny the bomb plant, spoil the party. But Astralis have no one near the bomb site itself. So it is going to be another round on the board for Ents. And that is going to be 14 to 11. And I, I hear pointing out negative performances, Blood, but Dupree has been re really quiet. I feel across both of these maps now. It's, uh, it's a little unfortunate. Yeah, sometimes it, it does. It is kind of like that. You don't, you're not very sure about... Uh, not sure about, like, you know, it depends on your placement, depends on where you're going to be playing on a CD side or whatnot. But this was a strange round from Astralis. We had the aggression from Dupree coming earlier on, and then Majisk and Glaive, they, they tried desperately to push in, get some information, maybe try and get the trade. But instead, they just give away uh, multiple, two, multiple 1v1s. And they just walk into the waiting arms of Ents, and that's one of the easiest rounds Ents has won so far on the T side. And what has been a pretty scrappy affair in the second half, but 14-11, now Ents need two more rounds, Dinko, to take it to map number three. And Astralis, they have the buy, but look at the money. If they lose this one, Ents are on map are on map point, and Astralis will have to eke out what will be a quite a miserable buy. So Ents, they know they have their foot in the throat of Astralis, they just need to do this two more rounds. There's two more rounds to take it to map number three. Well, coming into the series, I would have... Oh, well, Glaive, okay. That is a huge what? play from Glaive from the one position. Just at the top of the secret stairs, delivers three beautiful kills. And well, finally, Astralis have answered back a few rounds... No, I've been looking pretty rough for them, but that is a huge play from Glaive. Device getting the last two, and that is just a cleanup coming in from Astralis. And well, Ents are going to be very, very scared about that kind of performance. If that becomes consistent, oh no. You're not supposed to get three kills yeah, from that no. position. One, maybe two, and then you get completely like Molotov or Nader to Oblivion or flashed and peaked. You don't lose three players like that to a player playing in that particular position, and that's definitely going to suck for Ents. And I was talking about the money for Astralis, but even Ents is cash their coffers aren't looking that healthy right now you have surrogate x7 and alu with money ariel 2500 sunny on 3800 it uh, means a full full-fledged buy is going to be hard to come by so they might considering they have the two round lead they might go for a little bit of an investment here some upgraded maybe an ak-47 and x7 and on sergey uh, you try to work around that while ariel and sunny have the little bit of kevlar and some deagles so maybe tech nines i don't expect a full buy here because going for that is a high risk proposition if they go for the full buy and they don't really have the money to work with after losing that it's gonna get icky but no they've gone for it they've gone for the full investment they're feeling confident dinko this is well, here uh, we go whew, this is scary yeah this is getting into uh the end game round 27 Coming right up, Astralis with a buy, and going for the purchase as well. Utility is good enough here on the T side, good enough to get something done. ESL1 Road to Rail is delivering great matchups across the board. And while well, Astralis, currently a map up of the series, are trailing by two here on Nuke. Their map pick, and the team historically have been a bit of a thorn in the Astralis Nuke side, ending their untouchable streak here on this map. Well, Ents look to try and continue it as they move here at round 27. It's going to be Ents moving forward. It's going to be Ariel, the first man falling. Magis stopping him from walking through. Sunny will get the reply onto Glaive. 4v4 will ensue. It's Zipex on the other end of the smoke. He's going to be holding on into towards the ramp. They're ready for it. They're trying to spam, but he's going to be getting one anyway. Sergey with the headshot finally gets rid of him in a second as well from Sergey. The young thing continues to cut through Astralis, and he'll make his way in towards the lower bomb site. Ents, the buy is working out for them. It's going to be Matt Point. That is such a huge play from Sergey. Two quick kills. The first one was easy. The player was blinded, but the second one, what a shot onto Device. And Device had such a good angle as well. Dinko had the AWP and now Sunny from behind is gonna win the duel. Map point for Ents. Need one more round to take it to map number three in Astralis. 
Oh no, the money not so good at all, is it, for Zipix and Glaive? Rest of them can buy up, but this is it. I mean, there's no point saving here. There's no point going for half buys or half measures. It's a full investment coming up from Astralis, and they need to win three in a row. They still haven't called for attack timeout. It's been ends all the way. Mazisk 26 and 19. Device 21 and 17. Definitely hitting the numbers. We've seen a big hero play from Glaive. But Astralis now on their last legs. Do or die time. If it's an end to one here, we head to map three. It's got to be flawless from Astralis for the rest of this. First one was a close to first wild train. We definitely could have gone either way. We've got ourselves a match on our hands. It's certainly a map that we'll be very happy with but it was definitely the one on our minds when we came into the, the stream today and well it's delivering it is absolutely delivering and ends they have delivered indeed 15 on a Stralsis map pick mind you after losing a train in a heartbreaking fashion in overtime that's decree now this is not a great buy of course, Stralis, 3M4s, 5 7 hands of Glaive, and of course, Zipex with the Scout. Surprising weapon for the Clutch Guard. And he's playing alone towards Ramp. Now, if needs be, the Jisk is nearby towards, uh, towards Heaven. He's gonna drop towards Hell and help him out. That ends. They've slowed things down. They know they have the foot against the throat of Astralis here. Just one more round. To go for the decider as Sonny's going to open it up. He's going to find Device. Well, Sonny catches Device, gives the advantage on over towards Ents. And this is the prime opportunity for them to end it here and now. Without many issues, it's Zipex looking to try and be the sole ramp defender with a scout. Yeah, that's just not happening. He's got to get out of there as fast as he possibly can. Magis has been called in to try and assist. He's done well by finding one kill. And they've got a player rotated in to help Zipex on the side itself. But this is not looking so brilliant. It's going to be around it. It's looking okay. very, very solid here. Four ends. It's looking like it might just be over. We're looking down the barrel of a third oh, map. No. That nade is not oh. good. The flash is worse. Oh. And now they're going to try and push through. Dupree coming up the secret stairs. Sunny looking to catch him off, but it's Dupree with a kill. Now the plank can come in from X7. A 2v3. Astralis with the advantage coming into the retake. Alu spots out Glaive. He knows exactly where he is. Smoke off towards Benz. It's going to obscure the vision for a while. Flashbang is good from Dupree. They know where two of them are. They know where the third player is, but it doesn't matter. Sex7 finds Glaive, and Dupree so very low. Alu spins around, and it's going to be <laughs> taking six 